Hi, and welcome back to part 5 of the F5 iRules LX tutorial. My name is Artyom. Please check out my previous videos to learn what iRules LX are and make sure you follow all the configuration steps in the previous parts of this tutorial. In this part we'll discuss some additional tips and tricks and go over the iRules LX and Node.js best practices. First, please recall that during this tutorial there always had been a single value received by the TCL iRule from the other side of the RPC connection. In certain cases it could be useful to pass multiple values between the Node.js and the TCL iRule side of the connection. We can accomplish this by changing the reply method of the response object to return an array. So in this case, in addition to the error code, a short message is also sent back to the TCL iRule site. This message could be logged or used as a response to the client. Let's make sure our data type is consistent across all reply methods. On the TCL IRL side then, this variable becomes a TCL list. Let's use the lindex command to access the individual members of the array. Notice that the TCL list index is zero based. So this is our error code and this is the short message. We'll simply log it to var log ltm. Next, let's go back to the concurrency setting for each extension inside of the plugin configuration. Again, dedicated means that there is a Node.js process running for this extension per TMM. So, for two CPUs, I have two Node.js processes running this specific extension for this plugin. Let's add a new extension to our workspace. And even another one. Now, since dedicated is the default concurrency mode setting for every extension, we have a total of six Node.js processes one per extension per TMM. So again, an extension in dedicated mode will result in a Node.js process for every single CPU on the box. We now have three extensions in dedicated mode and two CPUs, so a total of six Node.js processes. Let's change the concurrency mode for some of the extensions. As you can see, we now have only a single extension in dedicated mode, resulting in two Node.js processes, one per TMM, and the other two single mode extension, each run by a single Node.js process. The best practice here is not to run more than 50 concurrent active Node.js processes per appliance or blade. The default dedicated mode is best for any type of resource or CPU intensive operations, 
such as intensive data parsing or lookups for every request. The single mode is more suitable for lightweight type of operations and applications with a low amount of traffic. Overall, the box should always be sized and provisioned accordingly and again 50 is the total maximum amount of concurrent active Node.js processes allowed on a single appliance or blade. Now let's look into updating our Node.js modules. First, let's find out what is our current request module version. Let's check if an update is available. There is a new version out for this module, so let's update it. Let's verify we now have the latest version. The one limitation of NPM I'd like to mention here is that we can't install native Node.js modules. Those are modules that require the C++ compiler to be present on the box. So as you can see this fails because the G++ compiler is not on the box for security reasons. Additionally, there's always a valid concern about the security of those external modules we use with Node.js. This is why choosing the right module for every task is extremely important. Probably using one of the top results is a good idea. I'll make sure it's popular enough and is being used frequently and see if the code is being actively developed and well maintained. So issues are addressed, lots of frequent releases, and so on. Next, let's review the Node.js limitations on big IP boxes. Basically, the F5 Node.js module we used is the only supported API to the Node.js process. It's recommended to use only this method with iRules LX. Next, please note that the ILX call and notify commands have a limitation of 64k of total data that can be sent or received over the RPC connection, including the overhead. And finally, even though file system access is allowed, it's not recommended. Before finishing this video, I'd like to give you a couple of recommendations to online resources that will help you getting started with iRules LX and JavaScript. This online book, written by Marisian Haverbeck, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is an excellent way of learning JavaScript and it covers all of the topics you'll require. It even has interactive code snippets you can use to run your code right from within the book. And overall, a really great and recommended resource to get you started with JavaScript. Next, on Dev Central, this is an amazing series of articles by Eric Flores covering every single aspect of iRules LX and Node.js. I really recommend you go over the five parts of the article. They cover everything we have been discussing in these tutorials. Next, this video by Jason Ram is really recommended to anyone who'd like to learn more about the internal iRules LX architecture. Jason also published an article on Dev Central about my video series on iRules LX. I'll post the links to all of these in the description section of this video, so check it out if you'd like. And finally, all of the code we used in these tutorials 
is available on my GitHub account. This is it for part 5. This is the last part of the tutorials for now, but I might end up doing another video on iRules LX if anything new or interesting comes up. If you're interested in me making more videos on any other F5 related subjects, please post your comments and suggestions below. My name is Artyom and I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye!